Okay, and then as a corollary to that last theorem, this one here, if you know somehow you've got yourself a continuous function, it's continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on that open interval, we don't care what happens at the endpoints for the derivative, so the same conditions as the mean value theorem. If your derivative is always positive in some open interval, then your function's increasing on that interval. If your derivative is always negative, then your function's decreasing. So what do we mean by increasing and decreasing? Let me write out some notes here. A function is increasing if x2 bigger than x1 implies f of x2 is bigger than f of x1. And these can even be non-strict inequalities. It means it does not go back down. We have the word strictly increasing. Strictly increasing would not have these equals to here. If our derivative is strictly positive, then our function will be strictly increasing. So we will not have the possibility of equal to here. I'm going to write here strictly increasing. And this says, oh, oh, sorry. If your second X is bigger than your first, then your second Y is bigger than your first. So I've got myself here, X1, X2. Here's Y1, F of X1. And here's Y2, F of X2. So, ooh. If the derivative is positive, then for every points, set of points in your interval, your y value of the second point is going to be higher than the y value of the first. We call that an increasing function. And then strictly decreasing. It's spell strictly right there. Cannot get my L in there. And this says, if your second x value is bigger than your first, then your second y value is smaller than your second or than your first. This says you're going downhill. Here's x1, x2, a decreasing function would look like this. Okay, so some pictures. If the derivative's positive from left to right, your graph is going up. If the derivative is negative from left to right, then the graph is going down. And then again, here in this one, f prime is positive, the graph is going up. Remember, what does f prime tell you? It tells you slopes of tangent lines. All of my tangent lines here have positive slopes. In this region, like let's look at this tangent line right there. That would look something like that. that has a negative slope. This tangent line would look maybe something like this. Positive slope. Positive slopes. Now, here's where I disagree with your book. What are we going to say at this point right there? Is the function increasing or decreasing? at that spot right there where the derivative equals zero. And the same thing here. At these local maxes and mins, the derivative will actually equal zero. Is the function increasing right there? Increasing means you're higher than all your neighbors. To the left, lower than all your neighbors on the right. No, the function is not increasing right there. It's not decreasing. It's not doing either. Right there, my tangent line is zero. I'm neither increasing nor decreasing. So your book really should have written this. Now, 
we don't say you're increasing or decreasing at these local maxes and mins. We don't say either of those. You're just you're just there. Those are like the boundary points between increasing and decreasing. So anytime I ask you, where's a function increasing or decreasing? I always want open intervals. Don't worry about the end points. So I would say this guy is increasing on these two regions. That's negative infinity, assuming this goes all the way back up to A, open parenthesis, union. I'm increasing again from B to infinity. So that's all this stuff. The function is increasing. And then this function is decreasing in this region here from A to B. Again, open interval, parentheses. And it's not increasing or decreasing at A and B. It's not doing either. It's not doing anything. 